Hey, so today I'm going to talk about um, a very basic introduction to animations in React. Um, I know we've worked a lot with React, um, but we haven't really talked about animations. So the goal today is to leave you with some really easy ways to start implementing um, animations in React, ways that you can probably, from just my talk, you could start incorporating that into your own apps and sites um, and leave you with some resources so you can do some more research on your own. So first off, what are animations? Um, in a really like basic uh, uh, definition, it's the illusion of motion or change over time. Um, so what we mean by change in animation, so like one, so something changes from one color to another, uh, from one position um, in the screen to another, um, opacity, something from very transparent to uh, maintaining its full, um, its full color. Um, so there are so many things on uh, the sites that we're building, the apps that we're building, that we can move and change. And this illusion of motion is really um, important because we experience motion, obviously, um, very naturally in the natural world. And to incorporate that national, na natural movement into our sites and apps gives, it, gives everything a very, uh, a very natural feeling. And I'll show you an example of like when it's when looking at a page that doesn't have any animation and one that does. Um, and there's just, even though it's such a, something very simple, it can make it uh, just ex like uh, feel more elegant. So some examples we experience very daily um, in our very digital lives. Uh, when, so a lot of these actions take a lot of different forms, some common examples. So when we move something to a shopping cart and we see that little shopping cart maybe move a little bit or a number pop up, and the number doesn't just like appear, most of the time it kind of comes from somewhere or it has like a little bouncy effect. Um, so when we toggle between two options and things kind of move around and kind of have that little shape to it. Uh, when we pull down to refresh on a news feed, for instance, or like when we want to refresh on our page and uh, you kind of, it, there's this feeling that something is actually, you're actually pulling something even though you're just moving your finger across the screen. Um, so I talked briefly about why to use animations, but to, just to kind of break it down. Um, so it's really important to give feedback um, to a user. So this can tell them, for instance, uh, validation on a text input. So maybe you can have like a little shake of a nod um, saying that something is incorrect, that that was maybe not a good valid um, input into this text field. Um, another example can be a progress bar. How much longer do they have until uh, their app loads, for instance? Um, so this way the user is kept in the loop and knows what's happening um, without necessarily having to use a ton of extra words. Um, they can also just be really engaging and fun. I'm sure some of you have seen like really fun, playful animations um, in some of your favorite apps that were really um, interesting. I remember seeing one with a little mail icon and it turned into like a little airplane and kind of went off. Um, so that was a really unique way of uh, showing that your mail was sent. Um, a lot of scroll triggered animations, so how content loads on a page as you're scrolling um, can be really interesting. Also, it's very informative. Um, it tells like for spatial orientation. Um, so we are dealing with this one screen, whether on a phone or on a, on a site, and we have to tell users where they came from, where they're going. Um, so are we, did they, um, are they moving like, almost like horizontally through the space? Are they moving vertically? Did, um, when they clicked a button, did they kind of, were they enveloped by that new page that popped up? Um, so that like lets them know where they are, so if they need to go backwards, they kind of have an idea of where to go. Um, and also it gives them hints. So maybe there's like a little button that's moving around um, and that you know, grabs their attention and says, oh, maybe I should look at what that button is asking me to do. So it can give hints to the user as well. So very important to use animations. Um, so why should you guys care? Why should we all care? Um, well, we know that they're important just by what we were going over. Um, so really compact ways to inform the user. Uh, it's also, I think these two I'm gonna put together because um, unless you're doing like really pure backend work, if you're doing any kind of front end work uh, or you end up as a full stack developer, you likely will be implementing animations. Maybe you won't be designing them yourselves, maybe you will, but you'll be likely working on a team uh, with graphic designers, UX, UI designers that will say, okay, so when, this, when we switch views, we want this certain animation to, to happen. When, we, when the user clicks, we want this to happen. So you, it's your job to kind of make their, that dream come alive. 
Um, and being able to talk about it and know these different Im implementations, even at this stage in our careers, our very budding careers, is really important. So at least we go hit the ground running and know how to implement some of these really basic animations. So what can I learn right now? Um, and so over the past couple of days, I've been doing a lot of that work for you, kind of like parsing through, because there's so many options of how to um, incorporate animations. So in zero to one hour, because you guys have already done this, use a UI framework. It already has a lot of animations built in for you. Um, so unless you want to get deep into the CSS, no need to really um, implement all these, all these uh, really great transitions that are already built into semantic UI, material UI. You could already use these frameworks. One to two hours that I recommend and I'll be talking about briefly now are to use React, CSS transition group, and CSS transi transitions. Um, very, I thought it was really easy to implement, and I'll go over that. And if you have a little bit more time and you're really into animations, there are so many options. I'll show a brief list at the end. Um, but you could look at um, frameworks and libraries like AnimatedJS and GreenSock, um, React Animations, which is a library with um, some other like CSS style sheet um, uh, composers is the word that comes to my mind. <laughs> uh, so you can kind of create a lot uh, more in-depth and uh, complex animations. So, oh, actually, before I show you that code, so let me just show you some of that React CSS animation group stuff. So I have this uh, simple website here. I actually want to show you first this appear. So what I'm going to talk about is um, appearing, which is when a component is first loaded and mounted onto a page. So you can see this really subtle animation of how um, this text kind of floated up from the bottom of the page. It went from transparent to not transparent at all. Um, and, in com and compare that to maybe one of these other parts that don't have that animation. It just kind of popped, it just appears. Not very interesting. Whereas this really, just a tiny bit of work that added um, a lot, made this page a lot more interesting. So what does that code look like? Really easy, actually. Um, so there's a pretty chunky, uh, component here, or like this React CSS transition group here, um, you have to just give it a transition name um, and that you'll use in the CSS. So I'll show you that in a moment. Um, appear, so this is the one where it's initially loaded. You um, initialize that as true and you say, you give it a timeout, how long will your animation last? It's going to last for a thousand milliseconds, so one second. And on this one, enter and leave are false because we're only focusing on that initial loading. Um, and then the CSS, so we have that appear transition here. Um, so then your CSS just takes two, it's two separate parts. So the first one is what it kind of initializes as, at, initializes as. So the opacity is going to be very transparent um, and it's also gonna be, so the final position will be at zero pixels where it's supposed to be. And so it's starting off 80 pixels below and it will eventually over the course of a second uh, be at its final position in its full opacity. And this transition, this is the most important part here. So you have these two parts that are changing, are parts of your CSS, right? You can say background color, you can say font size, any CSS um, property. And then transition, since I have two different properties, I'm going to use all. If I was only doing opacity, I would just say opacity, but if I, or, spe or any specific animation or properties I want to animate um, or transition, then you, you can list them here or put all and it's gonna be that same one second. And I'm using ease out. So ease out is um, when it's slow in the beginning and uh, fast at the end. Um, and just to see that again really fast. And, yep, so that tiny bit of code made that happen. I also want to show enter and leave. So enter and leave is specifically for after a page has mounted, the individual components that are um, um, that added in, usually after an event, like a click event. So I just wanted to show you really fast. I have this simple to-do list. So after this, I'm going to go home. And look how it kind of swoops in from the right. And, and then I'm going to eat, er, eat dinner. And now, so it's like swiping in, or swiping in from the left, um, which feels very natural to us. We see that motion a lot. And then when I want to remove it, it's going to leave out through the right. Um, and that is through enter and leave. So um, this one is a little bit bigger because we just have some of those extra buttons. So you don't have to worry too much about here. But just look at that CSS transition group. Um, so that enter that transition name is enter transition. Uh, appears false. 
because we're not doing that initial mounting. But when each um, of those, um, so I have that ordered list of all of my to-do lists. Each one is a list item. Uh, when it is brought on, it um, is entering. It has that timeout of half a second. And the leave is also on with a half a second. And just to see that CSS, um, so again, each enter and leave is kind of paired with like its initial state and then its changing state. Um, and so same setup as up here, except these are enter and leave. And the last thing that I wanted to show you um, was if you want some more advanced stuff, there are some great libraries. Um, I used animated uh, for this one to be able to just give some feedback on some incorrect text input. Well, first you saw, I, let me, I fast forwarded through it. So first you just see this um, expanding text. Um, that so very easy to do with that library. And then also putting in something incorrect. When I press enter and it's something that's incorrect, it kind of shakes. And I intuitively know what that means, that I put something in incorrectly. Maybe you'd want to give some more feedback about what was wrong. Um, but it's a really uh, uh, natural and easy way to incorporate that. So um, I was able to do that, like I said, with, um, with Animate. Um, but you can, and I was using React CSS trans transition group, um, but there are so many other libraries. Um, I also put web animation API in the bottom uh, with an asterisk because it's not technically a library. Um, it is now a way to do CSS in JavaScript. Um, so uh, it's really interesting to check out. So that's what I have for you today. Thank you. Thank you.